the only person I do worry about and is that I want to be a good person for, I think, is my responsibility is my sister. Me and my sister just have a really special relationship. There's a big age difference there, so she's been very motherly to me. I do have these pictures of you in the bathtub. I was thinking of putting them on eBay. At one point, we were never apart. I mean, we were always together. Then you must have gotten on each other's nerves, right? There had to be a... <laughs> no, actually, we didn't. I mean, it was like, she was like an appendage on my... <laughs> Seriously, when I was younger, I was this type of kid. I liked to go away, but I would cry. I would miss my mom. Like, when I'm not just saying that seriously. I would cry and miss my mom, and I'd want to come home. Dad, you know, I'm 21. I'm making my decisions right, now. Right. And so, yeah, I did get the phone call. I have to laugh when I hear people call me stage mom. Because... Did you send her to Promises, that rehab center? Well, I just felt like she needed to sort her life out. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, if you, like I said, don't run from your problems. You need to stop. You need to stop what you're doing and think. What was she doing? Was she doing uh, drugs and alcohol, do you think? I don't know. Did it help? I think it put a Band-Aid on the problem. That I want my children to read this book and just see how very much I love them. So relieved that... Uh... Uh, that this is over with, uh, that uh, our family can uh, finally put this behind us and uh, move forward. I've always been my sister's biggest supporter. So when she needed help, I set up ways to do so. Honestly, without the music and just the mic, it kind of feels illegal. Hello, love this. This is following on from my last video, which if you haven't watched yet, you kind of need to before this one because I'm not recapping all of that. I asked you if you wanted a video on Britney's female dynamics in the family and kind of like that sort of unsupportive nature in there. When it comes to TV shows, like the mother-daughter weird dynamic is sort of explored in shows like Gilmore Girls, which is one of the reasons I think that people have such a strong attachment to that show despite all of its many issues. I still love it too, trust me. Um, but when it comes to Britney's family relationships, even though, yes, we know that Jamie, her father, was the big bad baddie bad, and he was the one that put the conservatorship in place. However, Lynn was there in support of it the whole time. Lynn was there by his side, supporting the decisions that were being made, despite the fact that she had divorced this man, despite the fact that he was an alcoholic, and was pretty abusive, actually. Um, so it's like, it's very confusing when you're actually looking outside in, so let's have a look and to have a go through Britney's book again, which I reread for this video, and kind of unpack this stuff and also look at how she was handled in interviews and how Britney's relationship with other women is and yeah there is a lot to unpack here because <laughs> I think that all of you know the phrase that I'm going to be coming up with which is internalized misogyny. If you've not been watching me for years then you may not know that I've been making videos about internalized misogyny a lot on um, how we even view each other as threats, on how we attack each other, how we put each other down, how we police each other. This is kind of like internalized misogyny actually being embodied and we're carrying this stuff out. So in case you don't know it, so I'll give you some examples. It's kind of like internalizing the messaging of misogyny and then you are reflecting that on yourself and also you are policing that on others through things like judgment, through rumors, through gossip, even to the point of bullying and abuse is what does happen as well. Internalized misogyny presents as things such as slut shaming, body shaming, weight shaming, um, any sort of clothing shaming, victim blaming, big time when it comes to victim blaming, saying that someone is asking for it if they're just out having fun with their friends or something, say if they help out for a night out and oh my gosh they have some drinks that means that they are asking for it policing other women's clothing saying that wearing a crop top is too slutty that that is sending a message it's all of this is internalized misogyny just coming straight back out and viewing everyone else as lesser than. Britney Spears really is a case study when it comes to internalized misogyny being absolutely weaponized against one person, in my opinion. Britney was like the epitome of everything that's wrong, as I spoke about in the last video. Consider the line officially crossed. What happened to your clothes? What well, I have on clothes now. I know, <laughs> but what's this about? No kidding, what is it about? What is it about? Yeah. It's about doing a, a, 
a beautiful picture. But also her family actually fell prey to this way of thinking as well because they used a lot of this stuff against her and she was an embarrassment. She was the shame of the family but at the same time was expected to provide them with this wonderful comfortable life that they've become accustomed to. And um, when it comes to family reputations, sadly a lot of pressure is actually put on women. This has been known culturally for many years. Like if the daughter sleeps around, then that means that the family has done something wrong. I've spoken about this, especially in this video here, about how girls feel like they have to grow up too quickly. There is kind of like this double-edged sword where you're meant to be eternally virginal and then also self-sacrificing and wanting to make sure that everybody else is okay. Like, you know those etiquette coaches that you see on YouTube? This is what a woman is meant to be. When it comes to internalized misogyny, it's a way of women policing other women and girls in order to actually fit into patriarchal standards. And I'm sorry, I'm gonna repeat it one more time. We do enough unpaid labor, we do enough unpaid emotional labor, and uh, we don't need to be doing that kind of work and upholding these stagnant, outdated, terrible ways of thinking <laughs> in order to control each other when instead, we should be focusing on sisterhood, our own community, and looking after each other. What Lynn, Britney's mother, and Jamie Lynn, Britney's sister, actually did was they fell into line with patriarchal values and fell under the patriarchal rule of the family, which is Jamie's rule. And instead of questioning him on things, they actually just went along with it, and they were complacent, they enabled it, and they enabled the abuse of Britney. And so that's what we're going to be talking about and unpacking all of this stuff, all under the name of maintaining a good family image, because don't forget, Britney was bringing shame onto the family. And um, this is how it can present itself in our own day-to-day -day lives as well. Um, I'll be talking about that more at the end. Having that good of a childhood, I think it sheltered me though a little bit. It made me think that everywhere else it was the same thing. Going from something to nothing is harder than going from nothing to something, in my opinion, because you know what you're missing out on, right? And when it comes to Lynn's family on her mother's side, she actually had money. They lived in London, they had a really good life, and then she fell in love with a soldier and then moved over to the USA and she hated it. <laughs> basically, but there was still the family money. So Lynn was actually raised in a pretty good sort of situation. She was really flirtatious. She, like, Brittany described her as being kind of like a sort of rebel in a way in the book. And she fell in love with Jamie, of course, and they got married when Lynn was 21 and Jamie was 23. However, as soon as she got married, that meant that she was cut off from the family money because, you know, it's that whole principal thing. It's like, well, you've moved on now. You are now your husband's property, so they have to look after you and you have to sort your lives out together. So Lynn actually went from a pretty good situation to be married to an alcoholic and somewhat abusive husband um, who didn't really hold down a steady job, let's say, um, and was disappearing for days on end, was missing his son birthday was missing Christmas morning because he was out on benders. Lynn did actually try and file for a divorce from Jamie but it was his abusive dad, June, remember him, and his second wife, not the one that had put in the mental asylum yet. She hadn't been sent to a mental asylum yet because he sent both of them there. Um, they actually convinced her to stay. So of course, as a good Southern woman would, she stayed with him, she stood by her man and they had Britney and she took Britney to multiple dance classes a week. Britney was actually doing three dance classes a week and then she was doing gymnastics for an hour a week, which was an hour drive away. She did her first dance recital at three, her first singing solo at four. She was getting awards in local talent circuit, but then her family was like, oh, we can actually make money off this. So that was when they took her to the Mickey Mouse Club when she was eight, which is two years too young to be able to actually go to that. And then when she couldn't do that, Brittany started working at her grandmother's like seafood restaurant when she was nine years old. And then Brittany went on to an off-Broadway show, Ruthless, as we know, because her mum signed her with a talent agent. It was her, Jamie Lynn, and her mother, who were all living in New York together at this time. And as far as I'm concerned, this was a prime opportunity for them 
and all create like this incredible bond. I know that Jamie Lynn was like a baby basically at this point because Britney was 10 years old. Don't forget, none of them really liked it when Jamie was around. Even though it was a hell of a lot of work for Britney to do, there was still a whole lot of joy that she was bringing up that she actually had with her mother. So it really is a shame to see this. And then Britney went on to the Mickey Mouse Club. And then when Britney was 15, they signed her with Jive Records as we know, and then she started to live with Felicia. Felicia was here with her through good times, through bad. She was like, like living with her and they went through so much together. Um, it's really, really sweet seeing all of their interactions in the early interviews because of course I went through and watched a whole bunch of like the documentaries that they would do on her back in the day. That's for sure. You dragged me down there and we walked the got lost in the car. We did. She got blisters between her toes <laughs> from her flip flops. I remember I just cried. I was oh, like, no. can we just please take us a cab or You're something? like, I'll pay. Remember we were poor. But Britney's mother stayed behind and just raised Jamie Lynn and I think personally it was this separation where they started to just be like okay Britney's going to go do the famous thing and we're just going to be here and Jamie in my opinion would have had his thumb on them hard at this point because it's like oh well, this one daughter's off being successful, now I can get started to work on this other one and make her super rich, you know, for me. Because, <laughs> of course, he he only thought of himself, in my opinion. So you know how Britney paid off her father's debts and also bought her mother a house after her, oops, I did it again tour? In case you don't know, Jamie and Lynn actually got divorced in 2002 and Britney was really happy about this because it's like, finally you're rid of him. So as you can see from this trajectory, in my opinion, there was a lot of motivation for Lynn to be able to keep this really good family image, to keep a really good image of Britney, and to have like this sort of image control in place in order to actually keep her daughter making a whole bunch of money for the family because being a single parent is not easy and she was only a teacher and teachers barely earn anything, oh my gosh, teachers need to get paid so much more, it's ridiculous. Anyway, I could go off on one about that, but it was... There was a lot of motive for her, right? Because she came from something, went to nothing, was with a terrible abusive husband, and then now it's like, oh, Britney's providing them with like all sorts of wonderful things in life. You know what I mean? It's like, there is a real incentive there, at least in my cynical mind. This is sort of where we see the interviews where she gets brought along on and she starts doing the sweet southern woman thing where she had no idea what was happening in the world of fame and everything. She didn't know about the performing arts. No, I was not a stage mom. The fame in itself doesn't change your life. What really changes your life is how you react to the fame. What Brittany brings up a lot as well is Lynn puts herself in the victim role a lot in order to be able to just say, I didn't know, I didn't know what was happening. I was powerless against Brittany, my daughter who was a teenager. <laughs> Okay, yep, yeah, sure. In my opinion, you know the book that Britney and her mum wrote together? Big air quotes here because no, <laughs> that didn't happen. This is the first book that Britney has written, okay? Forces with her mom, Lynn, to write a book that takes on the challenges every mother and daughter face. It is called Britney Spears Heart to Heart. Welcome back, Britney and Lynn. You two, obviously from the book, it, it's clear that you have a wonderful relationship. As far as I'm concerned, that was actually done in order to counteract all of the you're a bad mother for letting your daughter be this bad influence on others. Like, that was kind of why the book was even done to begin with, as far as I'm concerned, to be able to have image control for Britney in a way of like controlling the image of the family from Lynn's perspective. This was a whole bunch of protectiveness for the family's reputation. That I'm not responsible for the fact that there's, you know, 11 year old, 10, 11 year old watching this show. I mean, I'm, you know, I can't help that. And if the parents don't like them to see it, then change the channel. So. Sorry. Image control and family pride. So the daughters of the family, like I said before, they kind of reflect on the worthiness of the family a lot um, because you're meant to be molded to be like the perfect wife, the perfect daughter, look after everything, do all this stuff basically. And um, by Britney just sort of being unapologetically herself, it was bringing the family name down. Um, and you know when Justin dumped her <laughs> via text message? I'm never gonna forget that. Ladies, uh, ladies, uh don't get your panties in a wad. There's plenty of Justin for everybody. Ew. 
I can't believe he said that. And after um, she had had the abortion and everything and she was in Louisiana just like incredibly depressed. It's like, oh, why is she not working anymore? Why is she not producing stuff? And so People Magazine did this interview in 2002. Um, there is an image that you can read, like a big chunk of the interview, and it's basically involving Lynn a lot. Brittany wrote in her book, I should show that I was doing well and just taking a little break. They had me empty out my purse to reveal I wasn't carrying drugs or cigarettes. My daughter is doing beautifully, my mother told the reporter confidently. She's never ever been close to a breakdown. Why is it that so early on were they saying that Britney was going to have a breakdown? So in my opinion, this is society really wanted to have a child star fail because that would sell an awful lot of papers. As far as I'm concerned, this is kind of like, don't worry, she'll be productive again soon. The thing is that when Britney was actually working, her mother barely ever came to visit her. It wasn't someone that she considered to be home to Britney. And seeing how Jamie Lynn actually treated her mother, Britney hated it. She saw it as like such a betrayal. I'd bought a house for Jamie Lynn to grow up in. She was not exactly grateful for it. She'd later say, why did she buy us a house? Like it was some sort of imposition. But that house had been a gift. I bought it because our family had needed a new house and I wanted her to have a better life than I did. Britney doesn't really bring up her mum very much except for when it comes to the partying with Paris days, which I talked about last time. And when Britney had actually left her kids because remember this is with the whole K-Fed thing and him being a terrible absent father and everything. Um, so she actually left her kids with her mum to look after them so she could go out for the night because you know that's what grandparents do for their grandkids. But when Brittany came home her mum yelled at her in the exact sort of same way that she used to yell at her dad. So maybe this was kind of like a memory trigger for her and she saw Brittany doing the same things as what Jamie had done. That could be part of it. Um, but what Brittany writes is, my mum always made me feel like I was bad or guilty of something even though I tried so hard to be good. The fight marked a turning point in our relationship with my mum and I couldn't go back to the way it was before. We tried but it didn't really work. So Britney's partying was scrutinized an awful lot. Like I remember so many people at the time talking about how she could not be a mother, how people thought her children should be taken away. She needed to have parenting training. I remember this being brought up. I think it's very important that, that Britney gets some baby safety training. Everybody had an opinion about how much of a failure Britney was because as soon as you become a mother, as I've spoken about before, you have to give up all of your interests. Everything is about the kids. You can't ever go out and have a good time. Like everything has to be kind of re-virginized in a way. I don't know how else to put it, but it's like mums aren't meant to be sexy or anything or have any fun or whatever. Instead of being there to actually support Britney because, you know, new mother, paparazzi hounding her all the time, terrible husband that wasn't really there at all, and just generally being like looked down on by everybody. Instead of her mother actually being there to like try and help support this stuff and like help support her daughter, instead she felt great shame about her. And that is something that's quite different because it's like, if you are actually concerned about someone, don't you try and help them? But no, it's like, I'm going to shame you until you do exactly what I want you to do. And that's not really helpful, is it? Don't forget that Jamie Lynn actually became pregnant at 16 and she got married to the guy um, as a way to like not shame the family, which, oh, as Brittany says, it's a child having a child. Like, Brittany says, right around the holidays, I found out about my 16 year old sister's pregnancy from an exclusive in the tabloids. So I was going through a whole bunch of paparazzi clips. So we can bring her to the car, we gotta get the car. How's your sister being pregnant? How's your sister being pregnant? My sister's not pregnant. No, she's being raised as you're not. Whatever. But how are you feeling? She just saw how you feel. Come on, come on, come on, come on. And she doesn't believe it. You can see this absolute disbelief, and she just scoffs at it. But then watch this clip and you see her face change as she's in the car. It's like you can see the realization come across her face. Bearing in mind, Jamie Lynn and Brittany were actually still talking and Jamie Lynn actually wanted to file for emancipation from the parents because they'd taken away her phone and everything. Don't forget, Jamie Lynn was actually acting at the time, okay? Both of the daughters were actually performing for the family and providing for the family. As much as you may say, oh, I'm helping the kids support their dreams and it's like, well, you can help the kids support their dreams in a way that like puts less pressure on them to work for you. I don't know. What I'm pointing out here is the control on Britney is the same situation with the control on Jamie Lynn, except for the fact that Britney was obviously working away from home, whereas Jamie Lynn was actually at home and her mother could have control over her. And still, of course, she's her father's daughter. And as we know from last time, 
Britney's dad definitely put an awful lot of pressure on the kids in order to like do better all the time. Jamie Lynn's more or less the daddy's girl. When Jamie Lynn was young, Jamie Lynn was uh, horrible. She had to be the center of attention. Brittany was like her second mother. She agitated everybody to death. She was loud and she was bad. And having someone as successful as Brittany, um, as your sister, can you imagine the comparison that she'd get all the time? It's like, oh, your sister has bought us this. Your sister is like doing this stuff. They, they're paying for this, they're doing that. What are you doing for the family? She's talented and she's not yet a woman because she's still a girl. Okay, okay, we get it. I'm not my older sister. <laughs> I can just imagine it and it would not have been easy for Jamie Lynn but because Jamie Lynn was actually working it's like whilst the other kid is going off the rails right well at least we've got one like stable source of income so we'll put all of our eggs in the basket and we'll make sure we do not lose control over this one that is what I'm thinking anyway at the time I thought oh my goodness I have this other wonderful opportunity for Jamie Lynn at that time so you didn't see any pitfalls along the way no. Conservatorship control. The image is now intact through force. My mum called me one day and said, Brittany, we feel like there's something going on. We hear that the cops are after you. Let's go to the beach house. But Brittany hadn't done anything illegal, okay? Just come to the house. We want to talk to you. And then Brittany was abducted. So her mum was in on this whole scheme. She actually was part of the coordination of it. She abided by like what Jamie wanted and helped the conservatorship happen. So you cannot go trying to tell me that she had no idea what was going on. It's just like, oh no, I just, I just left them up to it. It's like, she was actually part of it. <laughs> As Brittany says, she had known the whole time that they were going to take me away. I'm convinced it was all planned and that my dad and my mum and Lou Taylor were all involved. And this is where Lynn comes out with her book. She says, oh, I wanted it to be about my poetry and stuff, but then I, I wanted to defend my family and she wrote the book in order for her kids to read it but from what Britney's actually said about it it was mostly about saying all of the worst things that Britney had actually done and saying how much shame that brought and saying how terrible Britney was for all of this and it made Britney feel like she was a villain everyone is just like oh how could you let this happen as a parent which is where she leans even more heavily on this whole image of the oh naive sweet southern woman I didn't know what child performers actually went through or anything and it's like she was there the whole time that Britney was a kid going through this and then she just abandoned her as soon as Britney moved to New York and one thing she keeps on bringing up all the time is I'm not a state Mom. What was your role there? People said, oh, Lynn Spears must be a stage mother. <laughs> you know what? Brittany pushed me. But she was actually a stage mom. Like, she had been there. It's not like this girl had been working since childhood. So now the Spears family image was controlled, Jamie made sure of it, and Lynn was there to support it, even though she had divorced him in 2002, like I said. They conveniently reconciled in 2010, and I can't imagine why they would reconcile, right? Could it possibly be because by actually doing this, um, she would be able to get a bit more of a cut of the money? Maybe. So when Brittany got locked away in that luxury rehab, which is a torture place as far as I'm concerned, because she was there for three and a half months, right? Like, people had their families come and visit them every weekend, but Brittany's family never went to visit her, okay? Except she got to see her sons for one hour a weekend if she was good and behaved. My family, meanwhile, had me thrown into that place and gone about their lives. I called my mum to ask her why everyone was acting like I was so dangerous. Well, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. I also texted my sister when I was in that place and asked her to get me out. Stop fighting it. There's nothing you can do about it, so stop fighting it. I didn't understand how Jamie Lynn and our father had developed such a good relationship. She knew I was reaching out to her for help and he was dogging me. I felt like she should have taken my side. And so even when Brittany actually got out of the torture chamber, sorry, a rehab place, that was when her family showed up at her house. And when Jamie Lynn was just in her element, she was so happy because she'd been making all of like these appointments in LA where Brittany lived and kind of like using her house as like a base and just having all of these amazing meetings and going there with her father all the time. Hmm. It's kind of like 
one daughter had been replaced with another for the person that was actually going to fund the family, right? The thing is that Brittany was still forced to be on lithium at this time and she was struggling immensely. When it comes to Jamie Lynn, she had really found her mojo. I was happy for her. At the same time, I didn't particularly want to be around it just then. Personally for me, I think this is like when parents can sometimes use their children against each other as like this comparison thing. Every time that Jamie Lynn came back from a meeting, it was a whole new idea. Get this, a sister talk show. Every time she spoke, it was a new scheme, a sitcom, a rom-com. I know she's been working really hard on her music and I'm genuinely a huge fan. All of this was money making, it's not actually being there for the family. Like when you actually think about it, this is just solidifying the showbiz like performance thing as their form of healing as opposed to, you know, like actually being there for each other to support each other because if you're going through like a really tough time mentally this is where you do things like you help out with cooking you help out with cleaning you are there for them to talk about stuff you know like it's not when you're just like here's a work opportunity only once her family actually left did Brittany realize like oh this is super screwed up and she was angry as hell in her new book things i should have said it was really important to me to First off, honor my voice. So we cannot forget the fact that Jamie Lynn's book actually came out in 2022, just after Britney got freed from her conservatorship. And Jamie Lynn's book, hmm, a lot of problems with it, shall we say, because um, even though she says it's not about my sister, she brings up her sister an awful lot, right? Like, I'm not denying the fact it would have been incredibly hard to actually be the younger sister to someone that was an absolute superstar and probably have people compare you to her the whole time and probably having Jamie actually put that same pressure onto Jamie Lynn, I'm sure that would have been utterly terrible and Brittany actually extends a lot of sympathy to her because she's like I don't grow up in a divorced household but Jamie Lynn was actually scathing to Brittany and that's the problem because this just meant like their relationship was kind of like completely gone because instead of having like these conversations with Brittany she was saying how embarrassed she was about Brittany's mental health issues she was just bringing up all sorts of stuff from their childhood when Brittany was actually trying to like defend Jamie Lynn when she was little and this got used as like weaponry against her to say no she should be back in the conservatorship like this whole book was basically like my sister is a psychopath and needs to be locked up. That's kind of what the book was. Interjecting here really quickly because I realized when I woke up at 4 a.m. because thank you, Manix, um, that Lynn and Jamie Lynn actually both came out with their books, one at the start of Britney's conservatorship and one at the end of Britney's conservatorship. And isn't this just almost too convenient in terms of timing? It's like one is a way to justify the beginning of it and just say like it's not the mother's fault and how bad Britney is and like blah 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 like all of this stuff about justifying it. And then at the end because Jamie Lynn's book was actually quite rushed in order to like get out and that was in 2022 Britney got released closer to the end of 2021 and when that one got released that was again justifying actually Britney's really bad. Britney is the crazy one so to speak and there's all of this stuff from our childhood and just sharing like all of like this personal stuff and weaponizing this against her as a way to justify it again. Now my little cynical theory mind here is just going like could this have actually been Jamie that was kind of like behind, especially Jamie Lynn's book? Because he'll never come out and say anything, right? Because everyone will just say, well, he's an alcoholic and he was abusive, so we don't want to listen to him, right? But because he was holding all of like the control, really, like we can actually see that now, then by having the women actually act kind of like as his mouthpiece in a way, that is what I'm thinking. Because by having concerned women, like this facade of concerned women, because you know, women always stand up for each other, especially mothers to daughters, like there's meant to be like this super, super close bond. So this is what I was thinking, like what else could be like such a perfect snake in the grass other than having Lynn and also her sister, Jamie Lynn, two women that she was incredibly close with her whole life until, well, later on when they just decided to go off on their own way and just keep spending her money, whatever. Um, like what would be more perfect than that? 
right? But that could just be my 4am conspiracy brain, but it's hours and hours later and I'm still thinking of it like, this just makes perfect sense. Because I've brought this up in the past, right? The way that women actually interview other women is again like this snake in the grass tactic, like with Diane Sawyer did this a lot, Barbara Walters did this a lot, like this whole like, we're appealing to you, we're making you feel comfortable because we relate to you because we're women as well. But really they're the ones that ask like the sneakiest questions they're the ones that actually ask the the most personal questions like you see this in Britney's interviews you see it across like I've covered so many different um, celebrity women that have been treated terribly as well you see it in those interviews too so this in my mind is just a great way to be able to weaponize like the niceness of women again in that way um, but that could just be me let me know what you think um, anyway um, I guess we'll get back to the rest of the video now I felt betrayed by my father and sadly by the rest of my family too my sister and I should have found comfort in each other but unfortunately that hasn't been the case as I was fighting the conservatorship and receiving a lot of press attention she was writing a book capitalizing on it she rushed out salacious stories about me, many of them hurtful and outrageous. I was really let down. Part of me was wondering if Jamie Lynn had actually like been sucking up to Jamie um, because of the whole like childhood divorce thing. You still want to have your parents' approval. Like as much as like we try and unlearn all of this stuff and try and do stuff for ourselves, like people have been raised to think that their parents need to be proud of them, you know, so part of me thinks maybe this is because of that and because she felt like she wasn't worthy of love in the same way as Britney was because Britney was making money and that was the thing that mattered to the family so maybe that could have been part of the motivation um but I don't know like we don't know what each person's like internal lives are we don't know what each person's like full lives are like everyone has their own version of the truth right but that is just a theory that I have that could have like contributed to the way that she was acting because coming out with a book like this I don't know how you could see this as anything other than like a way to attack your sister like Brittany had been let down by all her closest family members and the women of the family enabled and supported Jamie's control they fell into line instead of protecting Brittany and standing up for her I spent most of my life in that cycle of ruinous behavior his bouts of drinking always caused me periods of torment and sorrow it was um created a lot of anxiety of the not knowing what I was going to get and also feeling like I didn't have anybody there to to just cut it out. So how does all of this apply to us? I know that on reflection because of the time of like a lot of this stuff happening in the 2000s and I've talked about the 2000s so many times um, we can put it down to there being a lot of rampant misogyny at the time but I wouldn't go saying that we've fully grown out of that now because I still see it very present online. I see it in conversations I have with people. I see it from all ages, honestly. Even though I know that when it comes to younger generations, we typically have had less time to have this stuff entrenched and so we're able to question it more easily. But I do still come across young people still holding on to these internalized misogyny ideals and then just judging people and putting other women down for literally no reason for just living their lives happily and the thing is it can be so hard to actually unlearn the internalized misogyny even I still have like knee-jerk reactions when I see something I'm just like oh you're just appealing to men we're living under patriarchy we got to capitalize on them sometimes you know what I mean <laughs> it's like it's that that you should be criticizing but because we've been raised to actually criticize each other it's still hard to unlearn so even when something is a knee-jerk reaction and you can still step back and be like that's not what I'm mad at I'm mad at this whole thing as opposed to this one individual but the thing is it's a lot harder to be mad at this whole thing because it's like how do you take that down oh you have to do a hell of a lot of work and build a community and like build each other up and do all this other horrible ugly work as opposed to like just pointing at one person being like you're the problem you know what I mean it's so much easier to do that and I feel like people really fell into that trap in the in the 2000s. So even when it comes to people who have fallen prey to internalized misogyny, like I do struggle with people a lot when they are constantly just being like disgusting as far as I'm concerned. I really do struggle with that, but I try and hold space for them and actually have a conversation with them. It's like, why do you think like this? Why are you thinking by this person wearing a crop top that they're asking for it? 
what what is that the thing is when we hold on to internalized misogyny and we judge others and we push them away we put them down we're actually holding ourselves back from having like sisterhood from having community from actually like having confidence in a way and i personally think that this is doing us all a disservice <laughs> to think less of people because they look a certain way or they act a certain way because can I bring up the Spice Girls? Um, appreciating each other for like all our differences is a really positive thing. In the same way that I don't think any less of a woman if she doesn't want to wear makeup. I hope that people don't think any less of me because I like to dress up the way that I do. And the thing is, right, don't we want to be able to have good relationships with other people, including our family? And I know that we're coming to the time of year where we have kind of like forced interactions with family members who we may not get along with, who we may have clashes with. Um, so what I'm going to be doing is a series of videos. They may even be weekly because I want to make these shorter. Um, and I'll be including studies, I'll be including statistics and things that you can actually refer back to if you want to talk to them about stuff or if you want to um, be able to have like um, just even send the video to them. What I'm on about is something within us we can all change and that's unlearning patriarchal teaching. It's confronting work but honestly it's so positive to let people be just how they want to be and not think less of others. I hope that you subscribe, I hope that you enjoyed this kind of like unpacking of the family dynamics and I'm sure that you've seen um, some of the things that were happening in Brittany's family from the way that her mother and her sister were treating her um, in your own lives. If you have, I'm incredibly sorry. I hope that you love this. Have a wonderful rest of your week and I'll see you again next time with episode one of the series.